Welcome to the DL. This is the show where we talk about everything in the truck and equipment repair industry. It's my job to help inform and educate you on ways to help your business. We talk with technicians, business owners, associations, industry experts, manufacturers, and even a few you wouldn't think traditionally apply to your business. Welcome to another episode of the DL. I am your host, Tyler Robertson. And today we're gonna to talk about one of our favorite subjects, actually probably the reason diesel laptops has even been successful. And that's all the emissions and all the stuff that goes on top of the engine nowadays. So there's a lot of solutions. There's, there's a lot of things going on in the market. We'll probably talk about deletes a little bit and that whole thing that we see. We'll talk about problems. We'll talk about how things have changed. And we'll obviously talk about the solutions that diesel force is here today to talk about. So with all that said, I just want to introduce Jason with Diesel Force. So welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me, Tyler. We uh, we finally did it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, or I should say I finally did. It. <laughs> so I, I'll tell you what, it is real nice getting people back into the studio and actually being able to face to face and do tours and face to face meetings. I am tired of Zoom and go to meetings and, and, and all these things. Are you having that same fatigue uh, as well? Absolutely, absolutely. We're we're definitely an in person type team. So. Yeah, and you were like a you were a real road warrior too, right? You're out there a lot of I see it every trade show that we go to, I feel like you guys are there. Yeah, yeah. Certainly right up until last year that was the case. Uh, you know, it's been a little different obviously since, but uh you're it's coming back. You can you can tell this year's uh you know, we're on our way. Well, some people may not have heard at all about Diesel Force. So do you mind just giving a little overview on on Diesel Force? Tell a little bit about your company, sure. paint the picture here a little bit for everyone. Yeah, yeah quite honestly, we've kind of kept a low profile that largely out of design you know we uh we have a, a fairly technical thing that we do here and uh we've just spent you know you and i met each other early on and uh you know we've we've been refining and in, in, in developing things for years so it's it's really we're in a good place now we our business has been built largely through the trade shows targeted trade shows and 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 referral and and we're just now really kind of coming out and uh open ourselves up more so to the industry so what uh, Diesel Force is a division of a, uh, a privately held uh, oil distributor based in Ohio. It's a family-owned affair, 101 years uh, at this point. Uh, very nice, uh, very nice enterprise. And and what Diesel Force became is a is a an offshoot of a uh, automotive maintenance system that they were already engaged in. So with, they got involved with wanting to, to tackle the issues around diesel, and uh, and Diesel Force was born, so to speak. So. Um, you know, I can go into the detail of that a little bit, or well, yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit. Well, first, how do we how do we meet? I, I think I met you. I, actually, I remember this. I remember I had my first rental building. It was literally an old photography studio yeah. that we that we kind of went into. Mm -hmm. And you're like, hey, let's come meet you. And you're like, you brought your engineer and everything. I think it's the first time we actually met. Yeah. So what happened was I was at a small regional show doing the road warrior thing, and one of your guys, I don't know if it was employee one or two, was working a booth, kind of catty corner to me and I you know it was early in our program and we we had a need for diagnostics so I went over and introduced myself and he said yeah you should really meet Tyler so I said all right next time and sure you know sure enough I called you and you had just I think moved into that building I still remember that office and yeah, yeah back in the early days I always had our chemist in tow <laughs> and then and one of my right hand technicians because you know we were we were developing this thing a lot largely through these you know the meetings and the and the different experiences we were having on the road so we we sort of had this 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 uh, this team of road warriors, and uh, you were one of those stops that day. And uh, I'll I'll always remember that. That was, uh, you know, to look back, it's really pretty something. Yeah, that was the first. I remember the big risk I had doing a, doing a year lease on something. And the funny thing about that building was, in order, the only bathroom was in my office. So literally, all the employees <laughs> had to like come into my office to yeah. to use the bathroom. It so. was tight quarters. <laughs> I, I remember that. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, so let, let's talk about the system that you guys have. Um, because you obviously are out there helping people with after treatment emission system issues. And it's really more on the preventative side than it is the actual, like, we're going to fix the current problem you have. But it kind of does both. Yeah, invariably it is that. You know, we it was designed, again, it was born out of an automotive. Uh, it was fashioned after an automotive-style preventive maintenance program. But, you know, obviously we came into this thing once the cow was already out of the barn. So, you know, when we get involved with folks, yes, we are preaching preventive maintenance. But the reality is that, you know, they're already in a certain condition when we walk in. So 
we're, we're initially sort of a tool to fix, and then from there, you know, I always say you want to get from A to B, and then life's a lot, a lot better on the, on the other side. So then from there, you want to maintain, and that that means you know having a PM schedule and being preventative. Yeah, so I know there's a couple components to this. One of them is the actual machine that does the the emission cleaning. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that machine and and, and how it works and the, the process that's involved with that? Sure. So, you know, carbon is obviously the focal point in what we do. Uh, you know, we'll tell you that there's a couple other things going on, and I'll touch on that. Uh, we have a, a machine that comes in a roll-around form, and then there's also what... what uh, what we intend to be, a, and, and, and largely is, a portable unit. It's about 30 pounds, so some, you know, some people say it might be a touch heavy. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's basically an aeration machine. So we put a solution into this machine, and it runs through some valve bodies and some, you know, some things I can't even I mean, talk where, about, where are you but, connecting it to, to the vehicle oh, to put these well, things in? Well, yeah, so what happens is, you know, on these uh, EGR systems, uh, it, exhaust gases are being recirculated. So what we do is we, re, uh, we interrupt that transfer. So the, you know, typically there's a pipe between the outlet of the EGR cooler and the intake side. So we take that pipe out of the way and we'll flange in where that pipe was. And we'll feed our foam through two leads going both directions, one in the direction of induction and one going reverse exhaust flow. So we're we're cleaning the one direction and, and back flushing the other, if you will. So it's this it's this thick foam that kind of goes through it. I mean, it, yeah. It, it, there's a chemical reaction. You said you have a chemist. There's obviously a chemical reaction. Yeah. I'm assuming that foam's kind of grabbing all that carbon buildup as it's as it's getting pushed through the system. Is that yeah, it what took, it's doing? It took years to perfect. You know, that's what we spent the first couple years on. You know, there's foam and then there's foam, right? So it's a, it's a Barbasol consistency, and it wasn't always that way. A lot of things that have been shown out to the, the industry over time are these, you know, these, these loose foams, these slurries. This is a this is the scrubbing bubbles, basically. This is a wall of foam. And uh, what it's doing uh, is it's, you know, there's no solvents in what we're doing. There's, there's, there's very, what I call careful chemistries. And what we're doing is we're dissolving that carbon off in layers. It's, I believe it's, uh, you know, the, the, the technical terms ablation. So we're, we're, we're taking, you know, we're taking a layer off at a time. And by doing so, we, we keep it digestible to the system. Because at the end, we need a, a, a nice strong regen. And we can't have all these large chunks of carbon floating around. And, and preventing a good solid regen. So, all right. So you you hook the machine up. It, it pushes the foam through it. Mm -hmm. How long does the process take typically? It'll vary. You know, on a uh, on a smaller platform, which we we consider, you know, let's say south of nine liters, you know, we're going to be pushing foam for about thirty minutes. You get into the the larger platforms, that's going to be more like forty, you know, forty ish. Yeah, I mean, so you're you're pushing it where you took that that pipe off, mm -hmm. and and where's it? I mean, how far down is this thing? Is that foam going through the system? And We're is going it stopping somewhere? Does it come out the tailpipe? Where what what yeah, happens? Yeah, so it you know that's a great question because people have sometimes wonder you know is there some leftovers? What you know do I have hazmat concerns? Uh, so what happens is uh, on the one side, the induction side, we're going in the direction of induction. So we're cleaning that runner. We're coming through the valve train, cleaning all that up. And ultimately, we're coming out into the combustion chamber, cleaning that up. And, by, you know, we're cleaning while the engine's idling. So by virtue of that, that's, that's vaporizing in real time. So that side is taking care of itself as we go. Now, on the exhaust side, we're pushing back through the cooler. We're, we're adjusting the hot side of the turbo. And, and then, you know, and of course the valves, you know, somewhere in that, in that path. And then ultimately we're, we're going through the DOC and we're coming to rest with that foam in the DPF. So the DPF will collect that foam. And when we're finished pushing foam, then we, we you know, take our, our gear off, put the pipe back, and then we go into a manual region. And that gets vaporized through that. Hence the need for diagnostic tools to do the forest region. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the first thing we do is we qualify trucks. So we'll use your tool to... Uh, to go on, hook on, and make sure that there aren't the sort of codes that are going to inhibit a regen. Cause, yep. You know, that, <laughs> we have to know that up front. Yep. Uh, and we'll use our machine to air check. So our, our machine is a great leak finder of its own. So we'll air check it, too, to make sure there aren't these you know, horrendous leaks that are going to put our product on the floor instead of where it's supposed to be going. Yeah. So, I, you know, I come from the OEM dealership world. And in that world, um, to me, it's always been... Um, Unless the manufacturer told you to put it in your engine, don't put it in your engine. So when I first got engaged with you, that's the mentality I've I've grown up with forever, been taught by by OEM dealers. Yeah. So you must run across that when you're out talking to clients to a degree. How how does that conversation go, and how do you guys ex describe that? Quite a bit. I mean, you know, we've we've had conversations. You know, just to reference the OE uh, 
subset. Uh, you know, we, we have our relationships, we have our conversations with those folks. <clears throat> some are rather supportive, some are, you know, a little antagonistic. I, w- I will tell you that, uh, you know, you, there's always the distinction, are we working within warranty or out of warranty? So it's, a, you know, it's either in or post warranty, and that's always part of the conversation. Uh, but, you know, ultimately what happens is this, we, you know, we'll say this, you know, we, we, we work for a pretty resourceful company. We're self-insured to the wazoo. So <laughs> we always say, listen, nothing's ever happened and it never, you know, there's not a documented case in all these years, but should it happen, uh, we'll cover it. And no one's ever had a claim on that. So depending on the OE, you know, we've had one, one or two actually send us some very large customers and, and you know, you got to understand, you know, they have their own narrative that they have to stick with and defend. And if it wasn't their engineering, they're not necessarily going to endorse or put their name on something at times. Uh, but, you know, it, it varies on the OEM side. So uh, how long have you guys been around for? Do you have any idea of how many how many trucks have been cleaned at this point or how many machines? Like any any idea to give the audience on? Yeah. Uh, are, you in, are you in your garage doing this thing at one shop no. or is it something bigger, right? Like that's no. what we want to talk about. Yeah. So, yeah, just to give it some color, I guess our chemist is the star of the show. He's been he's been in the industry since the 70s. Uh, so he's the. Uh, He's the old, the OC, so to speak. And, uh, you know, he's been doing this sort of foam cleaning for, you know, I'm going to say at least 12 to 15 years. I don't know. He did some work prior to getting involved with us. You know, his struggle had always been, you know, having a team around him that had the resources and the wherewithal to to build a program around his technology. So. He's been at it for quite some time, and, 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 and quite honestly, we ended up building the equipment necessary ourselves. We didn't set out to become equipment and electronics manufacturers, but we, we found we had to in order to deliver on the promise of his, his chemistry. So to answer your question, we have a, a handful of offices around the country. We don't typically, we, we're on trucks ourselves for demonstration and training purposes, but we train the, the user to be their own you know, they, they run the process themselves uh, for the most part. And then when we get into smaller scenarios, you know, you'll get some, some owner operators with one or two trucks. We have, a, we have certified third parties around the country. Well, we'll steer those to a truck repair facility that we're partnered with. So this isn't something we've done dozens or hundreds of cleanings on trucks. No, we're talking it's tens of thousands. Tens of th- yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have uh, you know, a fleet of 16,000 under a belt, a, a fleet of 25,000. Those are one or two customers, you yeah, know, and it goes on and on. All right, so uh, you know, you, you alluded to a little bit earlier. There's the whole, hey, let's just fix your thing, and then there's the whole maintenance side of it because this isn't really intended to be, hey, my truck's all gunked up with carbon, run me one time, and we're done. It's really supposed to be a, a program that they're supposed to be going through. So, can you kind of expand more on that? Well, absolutely, because you know, as much as and, and don't get me wrong, our focus going into this years ago was always about uptime reliability and savings in the sense of parts and labor. But, you know, there's a number of measurables in all this that we, you know, we went back and, you know, we, we found early on, and I think you did too, it's, it's not enough to sell uh, your product. You have to be able to, you, no matter who they are, bring that customer through the process, help them implement, and then support them from there. You can't just say, here you go, good luck. I, I know you're not doing it with what you sell. And we, yeah. and we learned very, you know, day one, we, we were gonna have to, you know, be more involved. So that, that comes down to, you know, we're, te- we're teaching after treatment 101, we're helping them with their diagnostic tool of choice, and we're, we're finding the way, we're, 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 find, we're helping them get from A to B, as we say. And, and, that's, and there's a lot of measurables that we also highlight. You know, the other thing we learned along the way is it's, it's one thing for a guy to say, hey, you know, this is cool. And we've had that. You know, you and I have done webinars. I'll get all these yeah. calls. And guys are, like, all jazzed up and they want to do it. And, you know, maybe the gatekeeper, the financial, the guy with the calculator says, yeah, okay, we'll try it. And, you know, at some point you have to defend your spend is, is what there I say. There has to be an ROI, right? So like, I always yeah. say to our people, we have to give them the tools so when the, the new boss rolls in, they ask, why the hell are you doing this? Well, this is why I'm doing it. Yeah. So, you know, we, we spend a lot of time on data and pointing out where the numbers are and where they could be. Yeah. So. So how often, once you do that initial cleaning, how often do you recommend someone runs this through to keep the maintenance up at that point? Well, it can vary depending on the application. You know, it, you know there's, it, in, it, in all things, there's severe duty, medium duty, things of that nature. I will tell you, uh, you know, and I should mention that we have this fully adapted to off-highway. So in, with the off-highway crowd, that the answer to that is every 500 to 1,000 in, engine hours. And that, hmm. 
that really depends on the application and, of course, the environment they're operating in. And the biggest factor in all of this is, is percent idle. Within those engine hours, what's the percentage idle? Because as we all know, idle is kills it. <laughs> idle's the thing. So, uh, so we, you know, it's not a one-size-fits-all. We do have rules of thumb, and then we get to know each client and, and, and dial it in. We're not trying to oversell them, but we certainly don't want to undersell them. And if some guys want to clean every oil change, that's not what we suggest. So uh, when you get to on highway, you know, we, we do a lot with the, with the waste industry. Uh, those guys are on more like a 1500 hour interval. And then when you get to tractors over the highway, you know, it, it boils down, you know, they're more mileage based. So it boils down to basically once a year. So what I'm curious here is, you know, when we have a big client, potential big client, it usually starts really small, right? Like, yeah, okay, give us a demo, let's try one. Okay, I liked it. Let me get let me get this guy to look at it, and it, yeah. it kind of goes on and on. Is that how it kind of scaled up? You mentioned it's a big client. Is that how it scaled up for you guys as well, or did it go fast? Did it go slow? I know I know it takes us like a year to close a big deal. I don't I know how I'm curious to hear how it works on your end. No, I, to be honest with you, we we've always had the same experience, and I tell you, we wouldn't have it any other way because we've always been very careful not to, you know, be over our skis with this thing, right? So. You have to be, you know, you only get that one shot sometimes and you got to get it right. So that's that's why we're just now, you know, that's why I'm just sitting here today. Because I feel like, you know, after this many years and this many vehicles and some recent refinements, we're very, very comfortable with where we are. But it took a little while. And, you know, we, we, we started small and, yeah, we have some very large ones under our belts. And it, and they did start with pilots. And, and I always say to people along with that, you know, they'll say, well, what data do you have? You know, there's always that guy in the room. Yeah. And it's, it's like, listen, you know, I can talk for days. I can show you reams of data. But what really matters is what we can do for you on your vehicle. So I always suggest a demonstration or even, a, you know, a pilot where we're going to give me a give me five vehicles and I'll show you for six months. I'm not going to ask you to buy a thing until you can see it for yourself. So I'll tell you what, I that's how I really kind of got more hooked on the whole thing and, and more believing because we had talked a bunch mm-hmm. and everything. But again, I'm I'm a I'm a OE dealer guy yeah. and I'm like, oh, I was, eh, I don't that's know. Yeah, yeah is this real? Is it is it scammy? What is it? Yeah. But then we went to a local county garage over here and I actually got to see how it worked. Um, I know there were some before and afters they did, and you know it legitimately cleans the components. Like I've seen you guys do teardowns and show here's before cleaning, here's an after cleaning, yeah. and it really works. Yeah, uh, you know we're not, and you know, and, and don't get me wrong, in something like this, the aesthetics really people do want to see that. We're, we've you know we've evolved to where we're, we're more of a data driven presentation. You know, we, we're certainly want them to get the the full experience, but. You know, we're not cleaning for just for the sake of cleaning. We're we're in measurable, so we'll take some data points as we're going into a, a, a cleaning, and then there's a you know, comparison after the fact. And there's there's things that you can measure right there before the truck ever leaves the shop to say, hey, well, look at the impact here. And that's in the that's in the context of pressures around the filter, and a, and a big I call it a fan favorite is we really restore RPM at the turbo like like no other. So <laughs> it's like putting a new turbo on. All of a sudden you're you're zooming out of there. So we measure the RPMs at I just to show, hey, you just picked up five to 10,000 RPMs at idle. Imagine what that's going to be like when you pull it off the lot. Yeah. So I know we get asked all the time over here about deleting and emissions and, and all these things. How often do you do? I'm just curious. Do you, do you talk to many people and they're like, ah, I don't need that. I've deleted all my trucks. Does that, does that come up often? I'm, I'm yeah. curious. Yeah, we, we do get that. I, I, I got to be honest with you. Our, uh, one of our, uh, you know, the fleet that our parent company had going into this was largely gliders. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a certain gentleman over that who that was his thing, and he was good at it. And and you, you know, I think that's a that's a window that's closing, obviously, and has been for some time. So when we were in our earliest days, we said, "Hey, we need." We need, in, like you, we need internal trucks. You know, would you please buy some newer trucks <laughs> yep. so that we can test you know, test ourselves <laughs> internally? I mean, we've got a lot of friends that are, you know, friends of the company are willing to be the test monkeys, but yeah. it'd be nice if we had some internally. So we had to convince them ourselves. <laughs> so, no, we, we acknowledge that. And, you know, when we go to, like, mid-America, things like that, people will say, well, what's going to happen when I get into these things? And I always say, listen, it's it's different. I grant you that. But what, what you're about to step into, meaning tier four final at this point, it's manageable. You just need something like this on your side, and we'll help you through the whole thing. Yeah, and I think I think you know when I look at the whole after treatment, I think there was those years where it was pretty rough out there, and things were failing all the time. I was a service manager at a dealership. We were going through EGR valves and EGR coolers with Cummins, like buying them by the pallet loads and sending pallet loads back for warranty mm-hmm. claims. Yeah. And I know there's still problems out there, but it seems like they're not as bad as they were when this technology all first came out. Everyone's kind of 
getting yeah. a little bit better at it. Tier three and tier four interim were yeah they that's where the horror stories came <laughs> from yeah. and 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 I think most that are you know in the trade day in day out would tell you that things have come along a long way you know fuel mile, fuel economies come back you know you know failure rates are down. Uh, but you know they're they're still keeping us very busy. It's just you know the inherent design flaws. You know it, it was I don't know if you'd call it shotgun wedding. I, it was predates me how much warning the industry had on some of this. Yep. I know in off highway they worked on carbon credits and as long as they could, and then they just in some cases leapfrog tier three and tier four interim went straight to tier four final. So. You know, I, I, there was a rush to, do, to to address these things early on, and, and, you know, some of it didn't go very well. So are your clients fleets? Are they dealerships? Are they independent repair shops? Like, where, where are you guys trying to be at and, and market to at this point in your company? Well, it is, it, our, you know, our customer base includes all of those. I will tell you that um, we, you know, we train the trainers most of the time, but, I, you know, we don't, we don't discriminate on, based on size. You know, what, in, in our case, what we have to do when, we, when we're looking at a customer is gauge their ability to be successful with it because, you know, you're going to have to have certain things in your favor. You're going to have to have a certain caliber of tech, may, at least one in the shop. They're going to have to have a tool like yours. Yep. And they're going to have to have some sort of level of understanding of these and, systems. And the right attitude. Like, and, yeah. and, right, and the commitment to see it through. Because, I yeah. mean, I don't want to be another machine sitting in the corner that some, you know, that, you know, here you go, we can ring the bell once and I'll never see you again. Yeah. But we're not those guys. So if we sense that, um, we'll steer them towards a, a third party, which would be a repair shop that we work with, that we've certified, and that we monitor. You know, we, we don't just hand the program to anyone who you know, raises their hand. And in, in the case of those third parties, we're, we're just this week pulling the program away from some because when, when people call and they, you know, they kind of screw around, pardon the language, but, you yeah. know, we, th- that's not what we agreed to. So we're very careful about who we, you know, who's going to handle this thing directly. But we always try to make sure whoever wants it, you know, gets it, gets it through one of our channels. So I can tell you, you know, I hang out on a lot of Facebook groups of truck drivers and diesel mechanics and fleet owners and whatnot. Yeah. And I'm seeing more and more people asking about diesel force <laughs> or where's the nearest diesel force location. So your name's definitely getting out there more and more yeah. with everybody. Um, you know, so with all that said, you know, going forward, if someone's listened to this and they're, are you interested in taking on more shop owners and more fleets? And uh, should those people be reaching out to you if they're interested? Oh, absolutely. I mean, like I said, we we're we're interested in in, in helping anybody that wants to help themselves. Yeah. You know, it, there's so yeah. The answer, the short answer is yes. Yeah. Um, so we're I mean, if they were interested, is it dieselforce.com or where 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 should they go to learn more or? Well, we, we do have a website where you can you know fill out the the, the typical submission form. Uh, they're they're welcome to my email address. You know we can give them that. You know I I do answer every email. I do take every call. Much you know people laugh at me for how much time I spend on those those sorts of things. But yeah, I I I'd, I'd personally welcome anyone that you know wants to reach out. So when you do bring a new dealer on. It, what's the process like? Are there a new customer that's going to do this? Is it? Do you guys spend much time training them on doing this thing? Are you consulted through the whole thing, or how do you how do you keep tabs on? Because that gets hard to do as you scale and have more yeah. customers, right? I've just I've just built out our team with two more people just uh, in the last thirty days for the follow up. You know, because you know, quite honestly, obviously with the the last year being what it was, a lot of things just kind of got quiet. So we didn't. We didn't ring a lot of phones because, you know, people had other things to think about, obviously. But now that things are starting to ramp again, you know, I, I do have some folks that, you know, we, we try to keep uh, a regular contact with our client base. And, and you know, in, in what we do, the training is part of the program. It's baked in. There's no extra charge for training, and we don't limit training. We only ask people to obviously respect our time and our pre-existing schedule to say, hey, listen, you know, and, and you know, if they if they raise a hand, you know, I, I – I kind of plan a lot of where we travel to on, on, on a given basis. We'll, we'll make sure if we're headed to a general area, we'll reach out to everyone that we deal with in that general area and say, hey, we're going to be in your neck of the woods. Do you need a hand with anything? So so I'm assuming you see a lot of stuff out in the field. I mean, you're just, even in today, you're like, oh, yeah, I was at a customer's location. And every time I talk to you, you're somewhere and yeah. you see some things. Can you kind of describe what, what you're seeing out in the market or a story or two kind of how you're helping people? Well, you know, there's 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 there are all sorts of things that happen, both self-inflicted and not, right? So we, you know, whatever the case may be, we we're, we're there for a client. We're not, 
we try not to be one dimensional in this because if we sometimes we may not have a direct hand in the solution to a problem, but you know we we certainly know people like yourself. We can steer people in the right direction. So we we try to be that go to to say, hey, whatever happens, give me a call and we'll. We'll, we'll 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 see what happens, and and well, you know, not to pick on any subset of our industry, but you know, I have it, we'll go to the larger clients for a minute. You know, if you were everyone's struggling with a tech shortage, whether it's myself, the client, or the or the dealer community, everyone's running short, and you know, now more than ever, I guess is what you could say, given yeah. recent events. Uh, so we're we're trying to help people. We're trying to enable people to be more self sufficient. That's not a knock on the dealer community. It's just hey, if you can do it yourself and never leaves your shop, you know, you take it over to the dealer. The odds are it's going to be sitting there for a little bit. You know, they're running yeah. behind as it is. So we we're always trying to say hey, just remember us before you go sign up for a week or two's wait and fifteen grand when we could together fix it for five. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm always trying to set those reminders and we've got a lot of that going on right now. So are you still seeing OEM dealers booked up for a week or two and telling people we're just we're just busy and can't get to you? Is it is it still a problem? I know it was a problem oh, when I left that oh, five years ago. I think it's probably ago. worse right now with the added layer of the COVID and 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 folks um, yeah, there's so much freight to move. Freight's at an all-time high as we're doing this, yeah. recording this today I here. I think I was telling you yeah. yesterday when you called me, I just got off home with a guy who's had his truck at the dealer now for uh, eight business days, and he's losing his butt. And he asked me, can you help me? And I was like, well, I can't help you directly, but there's a guy within an hour and a half of you that would be, definitely nail it. And he went and did it. So yeah. he needed his truck back. I, again, I was just talking to some guys yesterday, and they were t- one guy said, hey, Cummins on back order for overhaul kit for 100 days. PAI, they're on back order for another two weeks. Like, it just mm-hmm. seems like now, now the ripple effects of COVID are just everywhere. Now new truck manufacturers can't build trucks because of chip shortages. <laughs> I like, think it's, everyone, it's crazy out there. Everyone ramped down their <laughs> volumes, you know, waiting to see where COVID went, and they, I think they misjudged the <laughs> ramp going back and yeah. the timing of that, and everything is running short. And it's to me, it's almost counterintuitive a year later. <laughs> That now we're having the shortages. Well, and you but. know we're all going to overshoot it, right? Like the, the right. economy's going to be like this, and we're all still going to keep going the other way and that's be like, what, oh, now we get too much inventory. What do we What do we do? That's what we do. But <laughs> so you know, we've, we've I've had meetings all this week about how how to mitigate the impacts of that. You know, certain manufacturers right now, model year seventeen and up, can't supply fuel injectors, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, so you know, we as I mentioned to you, we're we're we have a, f- a large fuel program that goes along with what we were talking about earlier. So we're, we're, we're helping them, you know, try to salvage injectors, basically, and, and not get in, you know, it's either that or rob injectors out of other <laughs> trucks. You know, people are turning, you know, what used to be bone yards are trying to get them back on the road. It, yeah. It's just, it's a, it's a free-for-all, right? Yep. So we're trying to be of service in this time of need, I guess is the way to put it. Yeah, you know, and at the end of the day, I look at it, I'm like, man, this is actually kind of good for diesel laptops. Trucks are on the road, they get more miles, more problems, more diagnostics. Even the newer trucks are more complicated mm-hmm. and new emission requirements and yeah. our industry is going fast. So, so one last question I got to ask here, because I get asked this question as well, because our company's diesel laptop your yeah. diesel force yeah. uh, electrification we got we got you know Biden just said hey we're, we're, we're gonna have two billion and we're gonna do charging stations and we're gonna mm-hmm. make car electric cars affordable for the average American and you see all these EV companies starting up out of nowhere all of a mm-hmm. sudden um, and you guys you're owned by an oil company and, yeah. and, you're, do, and you're doing emission cleaning equipment on diesel engines so yep. it has to have come up at least a little bit in conversations inside your organization where, where do you how do you guys view this whole thing I tend to be the one that brings it up and and I'm the one that kind of reads everything I can get my hands on. And, and quite honestly, you know, certain things are probably imminent in our lifetime. Yeah. Uh, though I think recent events will show you that we can't just flip a switch. We can't, we can't fix what we have today versus yeah. put everybody into another scenario tomorrow yeah. or, or any like, realistic like, time like, soon. Like Texas, right? The whole grid failed. Right, or yeah. the fact that we can't find fuel injectors for certain <laughs> engines right now or chips to go in all these things. You know, pack cars. You know, they're just parking trucks right now. They're semi-finished because they kill, you know, they don't have the ingredients. So yep. I think there's a long way to go. I'm not fighting it, but I'm just telling people this. You know, there's a transition there. And whether it's electric or in long haul, maybe hydrogen, there's a lot of talk there, too. Uh, we're just here to help in the interim. And that interim is probably, you know, another 20, 25 years. Yeah. And quite frankly, if I'm still doing this then, it's just going to be for fun. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I, um, you know, there was a, a thing I posted on LinkedIn not too long ago where it really showed how Tesla, you know, who's been around for 10 years now, people don't sometimes realize that. Mm-hmm. 
But it took them 10 years to get a little bit of the market share, and it, it takes a while for things to grab hold, and technologies to get proven, and the cost to be right, and, and for things to make financial sense, especially in a, a business like ours, where it's revenue-generating tools is what trucks are. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's, they could have the trucks ready tomorrow, but then you have the inf infrastructure, which obviously this week and, and last week there's been a lot of attention to, but still, these are things that are years out. And, and like I said, I don't, Hey, you know, I, I want the world to be green, and you know, I want a nice future. Hey, I want my that. kids to breathe clean air. Yeah, too, I want right? your kids. Yeah. I don't have anybody. I want your kids <laughs> yeah. to be okay. And uh, so we're not fighting it, but you know, we're realistic at the same time. And what we're saying is this: you know, our impact is this. We can make things last longer. Than, and as far as I'm concerned, that's a, that's an environment environmental impact. Yeah, we can we can greatly impact your fuel consumption. That's an environmental impact. Yep. And, you know, there's, 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 there's ways that, you know, we can make things better while these other things are, are formulating. Is, you know. So we're going to get this episode out before our virtual truck repair expo. Mm -hmm. But I remember last year was our first year we did it. And I remember getting a text from you and you're like, dude, this sucks. And I'm like, oh, God, what? And then immediately you I were did. like, well, immediately <laughs> after you're like, my fingers are so sore from typing oh, to so many yeah. people. I was like, oh, oh yeah. okay, that's oh, okay. good. So yeah. I was going to say that's not like me, but yeah, no, I, I was in jest there. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. A joke. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to have you guys back again yeah. At, yeah. at the virtual truck repair expo coming up here in May. Yeah. You guys have a booth there. I know you got a presentation you're going to be doing during that whole thing as well. Yep. yep. Um, so hopefully we'll get get a lot of people there, and uh, I think they can learn more about your product at that at that expo as well. Yeah, and, and like I said, it, whoever wants to reach out, I, you know, I, I'd be more than willing to sit back and talk. You know, that's what I do. I think you could talk for hours to somebody. I just did that to a mutual <laughs> friend of ours the other day. I said, let's yeah. get together for a half hour so you can learn more about us. And uh, two and a half hours later, I was like, I better let you go. Well, you, <laughs> and for what it's worth, you're mentioning James Cade, who we both know, yeah. right? Yeah. And he's actually got a booth at the expo as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. He so, was very, very gracious yeah. about it and still interested when I was finished. So yeah. was, <laughs> you know, kudos to James. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a big subject. I mean, we can go into a lot of things and, I, and you know, we will over time, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, we're here to answer the questions. All right. So, what are the websites, phone number, email? What do you want to What do you want to put out there in the public so people can get a hold of you if they want more information? All right. So the uh, the website is www of course dot diesel dash force dot com, and then my personal email is jason dot burkle, which is a little tricky. I, I don't know if do we have the opportunity later to stick. Yeah. Well, you know what, Dustin's over there. We're gonna make him do that on the final my presentation. Make him do a little bit yeah, of work, but never, he, <laughs> he says he'll get it. He's giving us the thumbs up. My last name's a trick, so I won't <laughs> do that to people. It's, but it's Jason dot Burkle at Diesel dash Force dot com, and uh, that would be the way to go because I'm almost always on my phone. So. Man, you always you are you are like a working machine. I I, I want to be you when I grow up. Like, well, I, I, I don't know. I think <laughs> I think I don't know. We'd have to compare notes, but no, I, I stay pretty busy. Uh, you know, people need help. I mean, and they, yeah. there's I would say there's an unlimited market for you know there's an unlimited need for for education for you know people need help, and I think you guys are doing a heck of a job with that. We're trying to do our part as well. Well, it's been awesome to have you on. I yeah. really appreciate you coming into the studio and everything. <laughs> uh, hopefully, the world gets back to what it used to be before long and we can keep doing many more of these things and do live events again in the near future and everything so Absolutely. you know with everything said there you know like we ended every episode it's not just diagnostics it's diagnostics done right that means taking care of your emission your after treatment system using preventive maintenance stuff that diesel force can provide so with that we're out till next episode thank you for watching and listening mm -hmm.